Tremendous things for, for our game, for our sport, you know, a sport that we all love, that we all acknowledge is a great sport, but some people from the wider areas maybe don't quite understand that or have not seen it. So I think uh, to put an event on like this, great credit to everybody involved. We're absolutely uh, distraught, as you can imagine, after what's happened with, with the result. But good luck to New Zealand. It's high level sport, the highest, highest level sport can be cruel, uh, and it certainly is for the England Rugby League team today. I'm not going to got a chance at the minute. I'm not going to try and do that. They're, uh, the, well, they're, they're probably used to every ounce of energy they've got out there, both teams. And uh, we've had a brief chat. We've had a chat, obviously, about um, how tough we've been today, how well we've played today, but ultimately we fell a little bit short. So. Probably a little bit too early, a little bit raw still for all of us right now. Stringing the penalties at the start of the second half, Stephen, they catch up with you in the end, do you think, close to possession? Both halves did. Both halves. We started the first half under extreme pressure. The last five or six minutes we were defending our trial line. Threw everything out. Couldn't break us, couldn't find a way through. And we came through that tough period. I thought we played well in the first half. And then second half, for what, the first 15, 20 minutes of that second half, we were really under pressure. And that England team showed true grit, determination, togetherness, toughness to fight its way through it and claw its way back into the game and get ourselves back in front again. Steve, there's some tremendous individual performances, like so Graham and Burgess were great. I mean, what can you say about those guys? How pleased are you with the rest of them? All of them, every single one of them. They're, they've put their hand up, you know, they're, they have prepared brilliantly. You know, they've attacked this tournament. We've had some ups and downs. We've dealt with things, and every other from the teams haven't. We've dealt with things when they come up, because that's what the England team's all about. It's not making sure everyone's doing the right thing together. And we've come through the other side and, and put some, well, put in a, a brilliant performance today. But it was worthy of a World Cup semi final. Steve, can you just say something about Kevin Sinfield? Because he won the Golden Boot last year, and quite a few people were critical of that. And didn't think that he was a deserving winner, which obviously we thought he was. Not we all had, of you. Sorry? Not all of you. Well, many of us. We, the, the thing was, I thought, he, what, what do you think about his captaincy over this tournament? He's, he, look, look, man, he's, I can't speak out enough of him. But, uh, if you had a daughter, you'd want, him to, you'd want to marry someone like him. Because that's so bloke, do you know what I mean? He's, he's just a great bloke, great professional. And he does things... He does things when no one else is watching. We're all, we, we can all behave ourselves, we can all look good, we can all do, do our extras when, when the coach is watching, the condition is watching. This bloke does everything all the time when no one's watching. That's a, a real true sign of a champion. He isn't blessed with outstanding speed. He isn't blessed with outstanding size or power. But he gets every single ounce he can out of himself and the others around him. I thought he was great too. At the same time, have you played yourself over a missed tackle? I don't think he's got anything to blame himself about Kev. I think he's wiped his socks off. You know, it'd be very cruel to, to pin the blame on anybody for anything for that result. Steve, how long will it take you to get over the fact that you missed out on a final by the you know, by one high tackle in twenty seconds? Mm. How long I'm not sure to, I, I'm not sure what the answer is to that. It's uh look we You've got to move on. There's worse things in life. Let's be fair. Let's be honest. Like, we're, like we're all feeling at the minute right now, like as low as we probably can be. But in reality, it's not. There's a lot of worse things happen in the world. A lot of things happen. I think we should be privileged that we've been part of this World Cup. Privileged that we've been part of such a a brilliant game. I've got to say, it's a, a fantastic game of rugby league. You know, I would have thought it. I don't know what the attendance figure was. I don't know. Anybody knows that. Yet. 
put 60 odd, nearly 70,000 people in our national stadium, supporting our supporting our sport of rugby league. Great. So, uh, the answer to the question, I'm not sure, but I'm sure uh, I'll soon get a reality check and realise that we've got to move on and push on. Was, was there ever a moment in the game towards the end where you started to think that we have got this? No. No, when you play, you, when you play the very best teams, you, you know, unless you're way in front, you know what I mean? But, you know, when there's, there's four points on the scoreboard, uh, anything can happen at any stage. And, and that's, that's how we panned out at the end. So, no, no, I never, never, uh, never felt that game was won. What was uh, going through your mind the last sort of three minutes when you were trying to close out the game? Because you could really feel the tension in the ground getting to everybody. Were you able to feel dispassion or was it just instructions to your players or were you getting a bit nervous as well? Oh, I think at that stage, instructions are, are limited. They're, they're very limited in the past. We, uh, Paul Deacon, an assistant there, has been you know, incredible for me throughout the tournament. He's a, he's a young man who's a uh, Found his way coach. He's going to be a very, very good rugby league coach. He's probably the calmest one in the box next to me. Um, but now at that stage, we knew it was in the players' hands. At that stage, there's nothing you can do to help him. And uh, unfortunately, we like I said, we just just missed out. Steve, just two two players. I just wonder if you could just comment on Gareth Widdop. Obviously, brought Gareth in. Yeah. Um, I thought he played very well, and, and Carl Ablett, I think I'm right in saying, didn't get yeah. off the bench. Yeah. Can I just explain in the latter case why Carl didn't get off the bench? Just a comment about Gareth. Oh, because you don't make changes just for the sake of making changes. You don't use the pace. I was really happy with the, where the team was going. I've actually been in the same position as Carl himself as a non player sub in the international. It's not a great feeling. I think he understand, understands the way the game was going and what was happening. And, um, I really felt we were in sync with each other in a lot of areas of the field and didn't need to, to use any extra subs. So that's unfortunate for Cal. Uh, I thought Gareth would have seen himself. I thought he played really well. I thought he came in. I was always confident he would do. I was confident in his ability. I felt he was the right player for this game against this opposition and for us this week. And uh, I think that, that proved the case. Steve, do you think this thing, a game like this and with our national team being involved in it, do you think have any wider implications for the popularity of this sport when the next domestic season starts? I hope so. I re really, really hope so. For the whole of our sport, from the grassroots, from the from the young kids who were hopefully watching that game today and probably in the dressing rooms tomorrow, you know, dreaming about hopefully one day being an England player, that that inspires them to to uh, to apply themselves properly and, and play the sport and that it attracts other people in and new fans, new sponsors. Everything what goes with making and creating our sport, and obviously some journalists from from Southern Hemisphere who were probably thinking, you know, we don't need any new fans across there and numbers and everything. They've got a fair bit across there, but our sport uh, needs it, needs that support, and it deserves that support. And if we get it, we will continue to flourish as a sport. Last question: Steve, What's going to happen to you now? Because yeah. I, I think your contract expires at the end of this tour. Yeah. I mean, are you going to stay on, or do you, do you know what your future is? No, I'm not sure. It's stage too early. Um, so the focus, and I've been on trying to give us the very best opportunity to be successful. It's been a pleasure, a pleasure putting the program together. Really enjoyed putting it together. All the certain different aspects of it. Um, Would you like to stay? Got brilliant backroom staff, great set of players, and I think in answer to that little bit of your question, when you are coach of your national team. Something you're always proud of, and something that um, you wouldn't want to give up very easily. Steve, how much progress would you feel has been made these last two to three years with the instructions you put in place? I think it's been huge progress, but I would say that you now I've probably sat on this side of the bar. I genuinely do. I think um, you can probably speak to the players about that as well. But they'll tell you, you know, the elite sports people. They are. Highest, highest standard of athlete that you'll get in any sport. Now, I'm not just talking about the England team, I'm talking about all of you know, New Zealand and Australia in particular, the ones who are out here, some of the players who are playing for the other teams as well. And those players deserve uh, the very best opportunity to do the best they can. And then the England team, what we've, we've done with our programme is give them the very best opportunity to do so by providing them uh, with great training facilities, great staff, access to sports science, 
everything that probably wasn't in our sport in this country over the previous period of time. Steve, you talked about only an occasion, obviously the Broncos have gone up a couple of days ago. Do you think the Super League must have Damien Long in the Capitals and Ben Slotter? I think it would be nice to be there. I think, we'd, I think we'd all would love a team to be in London, but with the um, dynamics of the competition, you've got to find balance between what's right uh, media wise, social wise, but, uh, in the wider world, and performance as well. Sometimes the, what's right for performance isn't quite right for the whole structure of the game, so it's a fine balance. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. All right, cheers. Right, you want to